I mentioned these concepts briefly earlier in the lesson, but it's worthwhile to explore them in some more depth. We say that two vectors are parallel if one is a scalar multiple of the other. So, if v is a vector, then v and 2v are parallel, as are v and 1 half v, as are v and minus v. In fact, since the zero vector equals zero times v, it follows that v and the zero vector are parallel too. Also, it's worth noting that v is parallel to itself, since one times v equals v. Note that we consider two vectors to be parallel even if they point in opposite directions, such as the case of v and minus v. All that matters is that we can multiply one by a scalar to get the other. In contrast, we say two vectors are orthogonal if their dot product is zero. Recall that if v dot w equals zero, then there are two possible cases. Either one of the vectors v or w is the zero vector, or else they're at right angles to each other. This is where we get the terminology orthogonal. Orthogonality is sometimes difficult to imagine in higher dimensions, so this algebraic definition comes in handy when we lose our ability to picture our vectors. An interesting fact is that the zero vector has the unique property that it is parallel and orthogonal to all other vectors. In fact, the zero vector is the only vector that is orthogonal to itself. To see why, suppose that v is a vector, some vector, maybe not zero, but it has the property that it's orthogonal to itself. That means that v dot v equals zero. But recall that v dot v equals the magnitude of v squared, so that means the magnitude of v squared equals zero. In turn, that means that the magnitude of v equals zero. Since the zero vector is the only vector with zero magnitude, that means the zero vector is the only vector that v could possibly be. So, if some vector is orthogonal to itself, it must be the zero vector.